Good morning, I'm Brandon Oswald. Normally you'll find me here in the forge doing blacksmithing, but today we're gonna to do a little bit of leather crafting. It is a hot, sticky Indiana day, and you need to have a lot of water, especially on the frontier. So today we are going to make a costrel, a leather canteen, and the benefits of it, or the common man can make it. A wooden canteen, you know, it takes a little bit of a skill, and the tin ones, it's more of a mastered trade. So we are going to tackle one that just the common average person can make. Easy project, one of my favorites. So for this project, the leather you wanna use is a veg tan leather. There's lots of other different types of leather out there, but veg tan is the one you want because you can wet it and form it, and when it dries, it'll hold that shape. This is the veg tan that we're using, and it, it comes in different thicknesses and colors, and any thickness or color will work just as long as it's veg tan. Now let's talk about the tools. Basic tools, very basic tools. Uh, you need some good sharp knives, uh, a good round knife. This is good for cutting through the real thick leather. Just some basic stitching implements and awls, punches. The very basic, it, it doesn't take a whole lot, which was why it was such a common item on the frontier. Easy for anybody to make with very little. We have our master pattern here. This is one that I've designed, but it's based on originals, and you'll see a very similar style throughout history. You see we have all these pieces, and these are gussets. They go in between to give it strength and support, and it also helps make it waterproof. And they, these pieces go in the top, and they give strength to where the cork goes in. So we have all our pieces here. We have our pattern. Next step is to cut them out. So when you're cutting your leather, make sure that you take your time, patience, and you don't have to cut all the way through on the very first cut. You can do it in several cuts and just be patient and follow the lines and have fun. I started doing leather work when I was about 10 or 11 and I wanted to finish the project really fast. So it was all about, you know, having that finished project, but I would go through it too fast and I'd make mistakes. And I learned over time, just patience, you know, take a little bit more time and, and do it right. And you end up with a much, much cleaner project. So as years have gone on, I've learned that having a good sharp tool is, is paramount. You have to have it good and sharp and just kind of let it do the work and just kind of let it flow instead of forcing it. If it's dull, you have to really force it to make it cut. If it's good and sharp, the tool will do the work for you. So the next step is to punch some holes. And this is where you have to be careful and count your stitches or count your punches so that everything lines up. You want it to be symmetrical and you want the same number of holes in all your pieces so that your thread lines up and you don't have to fight it. So always make sure you count, keep it symmetrical, and it'll work out for you. So with the holes punched and the math works out, let's talk about stitching. So we have our pieces, all the holes lining up, and how we're gonna do this is we're gonna get kind of the pieces set up so we know what's gonna happen. These rectangle pieces are gonna double up and give extra support right there at the mouth of the canteen. And that'll show you all the different layers of leather that's in there, which makes it important that your holes line up and you have your math right, otherwise you'll really have to fight it. Now these, you notice there's no holes. We will have to drive those through by hand because they don't kind of line up and when you get that many layers, you want to drive it through that way you have a hole all the way through. It'll make it easier for stitching. Now this oval piece, you might question, that is the base. That'll go in the very bottom. For the stitching, we're going to use a beeswax linen thread and you want to make sure that it's thick enough that you can really pull it tight and really cinch all those layers together. And it's going to take several chunks, so we'll just get something that's easy. You don't want something that's a mile long. Just something that's easy to work with. The type of stitch that we are going to use on this costrel is called a saddle stitch. And it takes a needle on each end of the thread. 
so that each stitch we do, the stitch is completed as we work along. And we can really regulate the amount of tension on each stitch and get those, those, all those different layers nice and tight. We want to start in our first hole and pull the needle through. And the first couple might be kind of tough. So we've got our first stitch through and we have our needles at the same length. Now for the saddle stitch, we will go through one side and we'll pull that just until it's snug. And we'll take the other needle back the other way through that same hole. And you can see the stitch tighten up. So each stitch, you can control the tension of the stitch and you can really draw all the pieces together with the saddle stitch. And it'll make a nice, clean, consistent stitch. So we have it stitched around to the bottom. Now it's time to do the base. And we're going to stitch, stitch it along the one side first before we come to the other. And this is where it gets a little tricky because it really has to fold up and kind of start to form to the shape while you're stitching. And that's where the saddle stitch really comes in because that saddle stitch can really tighten it in. This is where it's really important to make sure that you have the same number of holes and that you've counted everything and you've done the math and it's, it's proper because each stitch is going to tighten up and bring everything into the right shape. If you don't have the same number of holes, it's going to end up being crooked or, or out of whack. And you want to make sure that your needles, if they don't line up, you want to make sure that you have one thread and one needle coming out of each side of the same hole. We are all done with our stitching. You can see it's still flat. The next step is to form it. And to do that, with the veg tan leather, you wet it down. We're gonna use a tool and form it on the inside. And as it dries, it will hold the shape. After the costrel has dried and you've got it formed to the shape that you want, the next step that you want to do is to line it with brewer's pitch or pine resin. You melt it down and pour it in there and you can also coat it on the outside. You see we've done that here and it gets this nice dark color. And that will 
get into all the fibers, all the different pores, all the different seams, and it'll seal it up and make it watertight. After it's cooled off and we can handle it, we're gonna go over it with some oil, clean it up a little bit, and take care of some of those sticky parts. Well, here we have our finished costrel. Looks good. It was a fun, fun thing to make, and I encourage you to try it yourself. The leather costrels were wonderful in the woods. The long hunters and people trekking through the wilderness. The leather ones were not only easy to make, but they were quiet. They didn't clank around like the, the metal or the wooden ones. Perfect thing to take out on your long hunting woodland excursions. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.